All right, let's see if she starts up on the first try. Nope. She's not starting up again. Now she starts up. See what I mean? Today's date is August 18th, and it's happening again. What is going on, my 100 octane petrol powered dudes? Now that was a mouthful, wasn't it? I am with the F900R once again, and uh, today's video is gonna be about five things that I absolutely love and adore about this bike. So uh, thank you for joining me for another episode. And in this episode, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about why I bought this bike and five things I absolutely love about it. So now let's talk about why I bought this bike. As you know, I've been uh, pretty much used to riding sport bikes, a lot of sport bikes. And over my entire riding journey, I've just been really tired of them and I wanted something upright, I wanted something comfortable, and I was really searching for something that I can ride on a regular basis and not get tired after riding long distances. And so I did a whole lot of searching and I found the F900R. The F900R appealed to me for many reasons. Number one, it was a brand new bike. No, one's, no one heard of it. And if they did, there wasn't too much press and not a lot of people had it. So I wanted something that was unique and I wanted something that was fresh in the marketplace. And because I am a brand new YouTuber, I thought that buying a bike such as this will provide me some really good content because people are searching for it, people are looking for it. And if you're uh, an owner of this bike, chances are you found me by searching for this motorcycle or seeing it in your suggested feeds on YouTube. So thank you for watching once again. And if you haven't watched all the other videos for this, make sure you do. Now, this video is all about the things that I love about this bike, but I also have another video of five things I hate about this bike. And so if you haven't watched that video yet, make sure to check that one out after this. So I initially fell in love with sport bikes. Sport bikes are sleek, they're fast, they're exciting, they sound amazing. And I just had to get my hands on them because I love speed, I love going to track day events, I love doing all that stuff. I started my riding journey in September, no, I started my riding journey in June or July of last year. And since that time, I would say 95% of the motorcycles that I've ridden have been sport bikes. We're talking aggressive sport bikes. My first motorcycle ever was the KTM RC390. Though not as aggressive as, let's just say, a Ducati Panigale, for your first bike, it is very aggressive, even though it is kind of upright. Not exactly R3 upright, uh, not exactly super comfortable. So as you can see, I already I started off riding sport bikes, and this continued on. I bought an RC Cup bike after that because the RC390 was great, but I wanted something that was track focused. And after the RC Cup bike, I, w I said to myself, you know what? I want something that's more comfortable. I want something that's upright. I've been test riding so many different uh, sport bikes and they're all great. Sexy, exciting, fast, everything I talked about before, but it's just not comfortable, man. I want something where I don't have to be hunched over all the time. Generally, I'm in good shape. It's not like I'm out of shape or anything like that. But that being said, uh, still, after riding sport bikes and being in a plank position, for a few hours. I don't care if you're 20 years old or 60, you're gonna feel it. And I felt it after a while. So the F900R was the answer for me. I saw this bike, once again, Gary over at BMW Motorcycles. If you're listening, Gary, thank you very much for the opportunity to loan out your amazing F900. For you guys that are San Diego based, local based, even if you're not local based, make sure to check out Gary. He's uh, the owner of uh, BMW Motorcycles of San Diego. One of the nicest guys I've ever met. And uh, he's actually a race car, he's actually a racer. But anyways, getting back to the bike, he gave me a demo model. I got the keys from him and he said, eh, go wherever you want. 
And you know, I'm not like the type of person who goes into the canyons and takes long rides, extended periods of time. I decided to go to my favorite spots like I'm doing now. Came back one or two hours later and I was like, I told Gary, I was like, man, I like this bike a lot. I think I'm gonna buy it. He didn't believe me initially because he thought I was just being nice. You know, he thought I was just uh, being a nice person by saying that, so I'm not wasting his time. But I was genuinely interested in getting the bike because I thought it was freaking I thought it was freaking awesome. It was kind of like a love at first sight. I did um, I did a couple of reviews for the bike, lots of content in the beginning. I made an ownership experience video out of it, and then I did a full review, which to this day gets tons of hits and and it's continuing to grow. So if you haven't watched those videos, make sure to check it out. Eventually, I'll create a playlist of the entire uh, F900R and F900XR series because me and my buddy Max, we did an F900R versus XR comparison video. So that's something cool to check out as well because the XR is like the more upright, the uh, more grown up version of this bike to uh, use for long commutes and all that other stuff. Traveling, it's an adventure bike basically. Anyways, long story short, after riding that bike and uh, giving it some time, I was like, all right, man, you know what, Gary? I think I'm gonna buy the spike from you, which I ended up doing. So after doing 250 miles with the bike, the first thing that I liked about the spike immediately after doing a, a touring ride is the heated grips because the heated grips come with the select package. And I, and I and man, it was like 60 degrees or something like that. And you know, you're, you're going like 60, 70, 80 miles an hour. Uh, you have no idea that you need heated grips until you own it. And so when I turned them on, it was such a, a, a cool feeling to, to have heated grips. It felt really good. It made my ride a lot more enjoyable. So the first thing I love about this bike is the fact that it's equipped with heated grips. Heated grips definitely make things makes things more enjoyable and more comfortable. More comfortable, I would say, but definitely enjoyable as well. So uh, that was a fun time, that road trip I did. And uh, because we were in twisty roads and, you know, we were just having a great time. And uh, I didn't have that much of a chance to use the cruise control on this bike. But overall, cruise control is a pretty good option on days like this on a Sunday where I just want to take a cruise, no cars on the road. Uh, I'll put on cruise control where there's not a lot of lights or if I'm on the highway somewhere. And uh, cruise control is pretty cool, man, having it on a motorcycle. On a car, you could definitely understand, but on a motorcycle? I don't know, man, I've never, I've never seen that before. So right off the bat, the appeal of owning an F900R versus the competitors for me was the fact that you can buy this motorcycle it's going to cost you the same as a street triple rs yeah i know the street triple rs has about 30 more horsepower and it weighs less than this more geared towards performance and everything else it's basically a daytona without the fairings all right but it doesn't have it doesn't have cruise control and it doesn't have heated grips and it's not really meant that much for touring as much as this bike is so i was like all right this may be a better choice for me so i did get this bike instead of the Street Triple RS. So then I got the premium package as well. The premium package gives you a couple of other gizmos. I forgot what it has, but it's got a couple of other cool things and I had to have that as well. So moving on, the other thing I liked about this motorcycle is this LCD dash. Oh man, it is probably, not probably, it is in my opinion, the best in the business. It's very clear, it's very legible, the fonts, the graphics, everything is just like very pleasing and it makes the, uh, the ride really enjoyable. I like the fact that the gear indicator is pretty clear. I like the fact that on the top, it's telling me how much fuel I have left with bars. My average MPG happens to be 44.3 miles per hour. And mind you, I ride this motorcycle very spirited. I ride my motorcycles for fun. I don't ride them to commute back and forth. This is strictly for fun only. This is the only reason why I ride. Other than that, it's telling me how many total hours I think I've ridden this motorcycle, 51.28. That's pretty cool. So the dash is pretty informative. It's got a lot of different options in there. I can cycle through everything. And then it also has a sport display. Like how many bikes have that? The only other bike I know that has that is the Street Triple RS. 
And then, you know, as you go up in tiers, we're talking like 20, 30, 40 thousand dollar motorcycles like, like uh, the, uh, the Ducatis. And I think, I haven't really reviewed them yet, but I think uh, the new Honda's got some nice trick LCDs as well. But at the current moment, as I am making this video, this BMW Dash happens to be the best in the business. BMW, I, what I love about the BMW motorcycles is that first, they bring out the technology for their cars. They spend millions of dollars making all this stuff, and then they put it on their motorcycles. That's freaking cool, man. Lots of gadgets, and it's a lot of fun for uh, a tech geek like myself. It's important to point out that this motorcycle has cutting-edge technology for motorcycles, even though Bosch that creates the 6-axis IMU is uh, an older system, but it's more recently being put on bikes within the last, I would say, one to three years, I think. One to five years, I think, depending on the, the make and model. Mostly, this, this type of uh, technology mostly gets put on more expensive bikes, but it's just amazing to me how the $9,000 base price motorcycles come with 6-axis IMUs, and the 6-axis IMUs give you all sorts of data to the bike for your safety and for uh, and for racing purposes. The 6-axis IMUs are responsible for cornering ABS, cornering traction control, wheelie control, all that good stuff. It's basically for speed as well as safety on the road and it's a good combination and I'm really happy that bikes like this are starting to come out with it. So that was another deciding factor because all of that stuff makes for a smoother ride, makes for a faster ride. And when I was at the track, I beat every freaking thing with this big motorcycle. But if you go to the BMW website here in the United States, they rate it at 99 horsepower. And I think somewhere around 67 foot-pounds of torque. So, but on top of that, the motorcycle weighs 465 pounds. Can you believe that? This, this 465 pound beast of a motorcycle does 0 to 60 in 3.4 seconds. If you haven't seen my drag race video, make sure to go check that video out as soon as you're done with this. Because I kick ass every single motorcycle that I raced that day, I beat. So if you're an F900 owner, please do me a favor, give that video a like because the more likes something gets, the more people get to watch it. So help me out, give that video a like, and also, while you're at it, subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna create a playlist of all the videos for the F900, and I definitely think you should watch all of them because it'll help you make a decision if you should, in fact, buy this motorcycle or not. So back to what I was talking about before, uh, it, it does zero to 60 in 3.4 seconds. It is a very quick motorcycle. Although it doesn't have that much horsepower, I think the low-end torque on this motorcycle just makes it a lot of fun. And it makes it very quick. I mean, considering I did 3.4 seconds on a motorcycle this big and, and with that little amount of power, just goes to show how much power this motorcycle really has. Around the turns, the motorcycle just kind of throws itself, glides along effortlessly. There's no drama or anything like that. Handled pretty good. Stock tires. It's got the it's got the Bridgestone Battle Axe tires. I think they're S21s. Not really sure to be honest with you, but I think they're the Bridgestone Battle Axe tires, and uh, they handled phenomenal. Like right now, the tires don't have any chicken strips at all. I literally went as low as I could. I think uh, the lean angle indicator for me read somewhere around 47 or 48 degrees. Now I'm no Mark Marquez, <laughs> no MotoGP rider, and uh, this motorcycle doesn't have any crash protectors, but I went as low as I could. Not really my goal to go as low, but because I was carrying that much speed into the turns, it's a natural occurrence, you're gonna go lower, so it is what it is. But most importantly, regardless of how low I went or how fast I went, I had a lot of fun. And I did it in comfort because the track that I went to was bumpy as heck. So once again, if you haven't watched that video, make sure to go watch it. Give it a thumbs up as well while you're at it. Um, I don't know how many things I already said that I liked about the spike, but who's counting, right? Let's just keep going. I think I got a few other things, but I don't want to make this video too long either. So, but uh, the, initially I test rode the, uh, the blue one, the Merino blue or whatever it's called. And I thought that was a cool color, but you know, I like something a bit more flamboyant because 
this motorcycle is kind of like a street fighter. So, you know, if you're going to be riding a street fighter on the road, you might as well have something that looks a bit more flamboyant than this, right? Exactly. So I was looking for something a bit more flamboyant, and then I saw the Hockenheim red with silver, and I was like, ah, that's the color I'm going to get. So, yeah, so now I got this bike, and these are the things that I like about it. I think it's a very, very aggressive looking, muscular, chiseled looking motorcycle. So once again, make sure to watch the video about the five things that I don't like about the bike, and then the playing field will, will be pretty much leveled out. I hope this gives you enough information and, and enough ammo to make a decision if you want to purchase this motorcycle for yourself. And if you already have this motorcycle, write down in the comment section let me know what you like about this motorcycle what what were the reasons why you purchased this this motorcycle to begin with because there's a lot of competition out there and i want to know what your reasons are write down in the comment section down below once again please don't forget to give this video a like and also subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys soon take care and ride safe out there ciao for now